enemy camp? Thank you all for coming. It's uh, very easy for um, those of us in the clergy at moments like this to fall back on uh, cliches and on quick fixes. Uh, a dear friend came up to me a little earlier and I said to her, Mel Hayes is at peace. And she looked me right in the eye, brought me up short and said, do you really think that Mel would enjoy that? Mel Hayes at peace. What a concept. <laughs> Mel Hayes was not a peaceful man. He was a man in motion. He was uh, a dynamo. And he had an extraordinary talent, which he willingly shared with all of us, and that was to ferret out the truth and put it out there in a way that we could not ignore. This man had zest, this man had spirit, gentleness, kindness, he had a wicked sense of humor, and immense dignity. He loved passionately, and he was loved passionately in return, particularly by his wife, and I believe his soulmate. Dorian Lord Hayes, who I think wants to say a few words, please. being here. I know that you're here because you knew Mel and you loved him. However, I think there are a few things about Mel that you may not have known. For instance, I don't think you know that he once snuck out of work so that he could take me to my first baseball game. I thought the game was really boring, but <laughs> Mel had such passion and excitement for it as he did about everything that he cared about that it was just a thrill for me to be there with him I also uh, don't think you know that he used to eat cereal right out of the box <laughs> in bed in the middle of the night and get crumbs all over the bed and I don't think you know that my brilliant Pulitzer Prize winning husband had a tattoo. I knew all of this about him and more. And I feel very blessed. Because you see, Mel fervently believed in second chances. He thought we all got second chances in life. And that's what he was for me. He was my second chance in life. A chance to be reborn. And how many of us are lucky enough to get that? But he's gone now. And what makes his death really hard is that it didn't have to happen. I mean, do any of you know why he happened to be on that plane? My husband did not have to die. It wasn't fate. It wasn't preordained. It wasn't, as they say, his time. No, please do not believe that. My husband is dead because of one willful, selfish, vindictive woman. Do any of you know who that is? That woman. Yes, you. Victoria, Lord, Carpenter. Do you know why we're in this church today? Mourning the death of Mel Hayes? It's because of one selfish, willful, vindictive woman. That woman. Yes, you. Victoria, Lord, Carpenter. Look at her. Every 
everyone, please. She is the reason my husband is dead, and I challenge anybody to deny that. Dorian, the reason that we're here is to celebrate Mel's life. No, the reason we're here is because Mel's plane went down over the ocean. Yes, and why was he on that plane, Andrew? Why? Because that woman thought she was finally going to get her hooks into him. Dorian, I've said No, that. Kevin, no. Let her talk. Were you so jealous of my happiness that you just simply had to destroy it? You are as guilty of Mel's death as if you would put a bomb on that plane. Can we do this after the service? Please, I think Mel deserves better from us. Condescending as usual. Well, Vicky, I think Mel would appreciate this. Because he loathes hypocrisy as much as he loves the truth. And the truth is, he loved me, and he wasn't supposed to die. You were! Somebody has got to stop this, please, Wickerson.